previously on The Random Review Show. Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of The Random Review Show. Ah! Holy shit, I think it's burning a hole in my stomach! Ah! So, my jar? I'm sure it's doing fine. Why are you making me do this? What did I do wrong? Wait, do you think she may be tricking us? Damn it! I'm going to take revenge for this! But this scene never happened! That's true. However, you don't exist! And now, on the Random Review Show... Welcome to the third episode of the Random Review Show. S to start with, I'd like to apologise for having a third episode. I tried to avoid it, but, well, we just couldn't think of a way around it. You see, third episodes just suck. Well, that's our conjecture at least. It's not like we've scientifically proven it. Actually... I have. That's just a paper with third episode hmm. suck on it. Oh, oh. I have no idea what this is. I mean, did you do like a comparative study? Did you send your results to a peer mm. review magazine? Um, did you have a control group? Oh, oh, yes. You don't really know what a control is, do you? Mm. Or a group for that matter? Mm. Maybe not, but I do have this graph. Yep, that's a graph all right. I guess it must be proven. Right. To the green screen room. Exhibit 1. SG1. SG1 starts out with the rather impressive Children of the Gods. A TV movie, effectively, that swept away much skepticism that spin offs from movies are always a bad thing. Now, aside from a few cringe worthy moments. And just because my reproductive organs are on the inside instead of the outside, doesn't mean I can't handle whatever you can handle. Yeah. It nevertheless sets up the characters oh, well and fun. the initial plot points. Jumping off from that is a Tilt-centric episode. Not brilliant, but logically following on from the last episode, and pretty much covers what needs to be covered. Following that, however, is the female empowerment episode, Emancipation. It feels like you're being made to learn a lesson that ten-year-olds did from children's cartoons decades ago. It's simplistic, it concerns the society of oppressed women, and you know what it turns out in the end? Women are people too. <gasps> Exhibit B. Avatar The Last Airbender. More mature than Batman the Animated Series, more consistent than Reboot, and almost as downright cool as Gargoyles. Avatar The Last Airbender went on to become one of my all-time favourite animated series. However, it almost wasn't. I almost missed out on this animated epic. You see, 
After the opening episodes, which established the mythology and introduced the characters, I wasn't overly impressed. However, it was enough to keep me watching. However, then came the next episode. And it was another bloody female empowerment episode. A bunch of girls, huh? You see, one of the characters learns that women are just as good at fighting as men. Whoa. So, this episode in particular annoys me because it almost made me miss out on the rest of the show, which is great. Exhibit 5 Carl XY. For those that don't know, Carl XY is a teen sci fi drama series. It's probably best summed up by its location on the Doe Y Smith Venn diagram. Now that that's clarified everything, I'd like to say I do enjoy Carl XY. It was a good show, sadly cancelled. How it frequently fell into soap opera territory with character drama and relationship issues that could have easily been solved, delaying the ongoing stronger sci-fi narrative. And a lot of this could be traced back to the third episode, where Carl XY, he, he learns whether a lie is right or wrong, when to tell white lies are acceptable, blah blah blah. And while it's not the worst episode of the show, it's indicative of its worst features later on, and for that reason, I really don't like the third episode. And finally, Exhibit Omega. That's a delta... uh, whatever. Torchwood. To be honest, I'm gonna rush over this example, as the memories are just too horrendous to bear. Torchwood, a patchy, largely immature, angsty spin-off to Doctor Who, a cyberwoman. One of the characters has been keeping a half-formed Cyberman in the basement, apparently without any other characters noticing whatsoever. This uh, Cyberwoman turns out to be what remains of his girlfriend, which of course he is trying to cure. It all goes horribly wrong and they are forced to kill her. The end. Yeah. Honestly, this makes the rest of the first season look good by comparison, and that is saying something. You have a real problem with women, don't you? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. You're so easy to wind up. <laughs> <laughs> Those were all pretty good examples. However, huh? wasn't that Avatar's fourth episode? And for that matter, Torchwoods? Damn it. Oh, you're right, yes, they're fourth episodes, not third. Ah, my theory's ruined. It's nonsense. I'll never be a scientist. Wait! I have an idea. Whoops. If I modify my theory. Aha! Yes! Yes! Bear with me. Yeah, but it was Stargate's third episode. Pilots now count as two. Okay. What about Calix Ha! And I quote... Carl tries to understand his feelings for the neighbour girl, while Laura contemplates her feelings for Declan. And Josh tries to ask his crush out... Thrilling. That's a science fiction? It is sometimes. Hmm. Okay, point conceded. However... What the... How'd you do that? that I was in control, had you? Uh, later on I'll convince you to, uh, to let me do the editing. Oh, okay. Your theory might have some merit. I present to you another exhibit. Star Trek The Next Generation. Star Trek's The Next Generation third episode is about how a leader from a proud alien warrior culture comes to the Enterprise and abducts Tasha Yar to make her his wife. 
Of course, eventually he gets her into a deadly bitch fight with his first wife. And she thinks I love him too. Most interesting. Do you? Of course I don't, Data. As Troy pointed out to me, I'm attracted to him, but that's entirely different. This episode is made worse by, because Stasha Yar is um, a independent, strong woman who apparently is attracted to this dark, muscular, powerful man meat of a... <coughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, so... Um, Yes, apparently women can kick ass, but this episode presents it in the most contrived way possible. It almost makes that scene from uh, James Bond, where you had the two gypsy girls fighting together, seem classy. So what you're basically saying, if I get this right, is it's another bloody female empowerment episode. Maybe interesting for another episode sometime. Yeah, maybe a new theory. However, this is all really anecdotal. True. What we need is more science! Also, I'm done. I'm done. Thomas? Science is done. Science? You've completed science? Yes! And what were your conclusions? Science is fun. About my third episode the hypothesis. Oh, I... Uh, yeah, about that. Um, I was first thinking of a way to do it without getting any confirmation bias. You only keep finding confirmation bias and things because you keep looking for it. Anyway, so what I did was um, I was going to a source where I could find the majority of reviews online, which is pretty much IMDb. Yes. Um, so I downloaded the database, uh, I isolated the series, from that I took the first season and then the very first 24 episodes. Hmm. Um, I compared the average of the, the series itself with the individual episodes. Right, so in other words, the deviation from average for each episode. So how bad that episode is in comparison to the season as a whole. Exactly, because Don't otherwise it. it wouldn't be fair to do it. Indeed. Um, so this is what I got. So it's a graph of episode name, episodes versus deviation. Oh, well, I mean there's a slight dip on the third episode, but... That's pretty insignificant, I think you've just disproved my theory. Oh, I've worked so long on these two pages. I thought that too. But then I figured, of all the examples we were mentioning, they were all either science fiction or fantasy series. And I thought that wasn't just because of our inability to cope with reality. So we took a list of um, roughly 100 science fiction series um, and fantasy series from uh, DDpedia mm. and um, I made a new list. Oh, that's way better. 
clearly deviation on the third episode, much worse. Brilliant. Theory proved. Well, it's not just our third episodes. It's also slightly the fourth episode. And the thirteenth episode. And a bit of the seventh, too. Oh. Hold on. Well, Hold on a sec. I can, I can modify my theory. I can modify it. If I... If I... Seven. Plus can mean and as well. Okay, so with the 13th episode, I figured this was because um, often uh, series are being split in two, and the 30th episode is the, the start of the second part of the season. And what I often experience is, is that as a watcher, I, I want to continue on with the main plotline, but they force this sort of this nonsensical episode onto us. I don't know why, but this could explain the gap. That's probably because when you get past the season break, they want to make sure it's accessible for new viewers. Probably. Yeah. For the third episode, uh, I'm still struggling a little bit. My theory with the third episode is that that's the point when the green reptiles take over production. It's pretty obvious, see, they have to take over production to make sure the storylines don't get, get too close to what's really going on. Um, however, by the fifth episode, the writers are used to working with the green reptiles and they kind of get along and they can work within the limitations. So I had a few theories on my own. Um, let's have some more charts. Hypothesis 1. The series only had enough creativity for one episode and after that everything goes downhill. Not the case. The scores have been based on the average deviation, which means that if a series uh, first season scores a 8.1, the third episode would have a 7.9. Likewise, if a series would have a 5.4, the third episode would score a 5.2. So the goodness of the series is being taken into account, only how the third episode compares to the rest of the series. Hypothesis 2. The pilot is often written by the lead author. At the third episode, a different writer takes over. Well, this seems to be the case with most of the series we've been referring to. Avatar The Last Airbender suddenly had a different writer. The Next Generation and Stargate's SG-1, likewise. Some other examples we haven't mentioned yet also fall in this trap. Take Babylon 5. The first episode that wasn't written by J. Michael Straczynski was the horrible third episode, which, incidentally, was another episode about an exploited woman. Maybe third episode writers are all overcompensating men who just desperately want to show the rest of the world that, oh, look, we science fiction writers think that the other 50% of our population also counts. Some of these writers turn out to have worked on two third episodes. Take for example Catherine... Well, that's a kind of a weird name for a dude. Oh. This example doesn't always count for every single series we've mentioned. Colex Y, for example, has different writers. So does Torchwood. In some of their examples, like Lex and Dollhouse, the third episode was written by a delete writer, but it still sucked. Hypothesis 3. The third episode is regarded as worse because it had nothing to do with the overall plotline. The funny thing is, is that often these third episodes also have recaps at the start of the episode that have nothing to do with the episode itself. Imagine you're on the run for this hostile robot species and you're like this in compared to the rest of this huge hostile universe. Then you get to the third episode and bang, you're on a casino planet. What the fuck? Now the reason why writers do this is because they can't really focus on the main plot all the time. In most science fiction and fantasy uh, series, you have a similar type of narrative progression. The writers take a concept like Let's say an immortal alien traveling through time in a spaceship that looks like a police phone box. 
cool concept, but you also want to have the audience returning and to really be able to invest into the characters. And you also want to be able to tell a really over-aching cool storyline. So what writers do is, is that they attach a plot arc to the series. This could be a recurring villain or a ongoing mystery. Now with the third episode, this is often the moment that they take off from the main plotline and they go and do something with the concept. This is not just because the concept itself is pretty cool, but also in most cases you can't really focus or have a whole series revolving only around the main plotline. We've seen a lot of series trying to do this and they're not always successful. But writers, if you have a cool concept for nigh and limited storytelling options, then why do you start with the weakest example? If you have a team that can travel to different worlds through a gate, why don't you start out with the craziest shit you can come up with? Because we might be disappointed with the rest of the series. You give us a weak example so everything else looks cooler. But writers, why would you risk losing your audience like that? The following is a personal appeal from the Bertine Foundation for Better Television. So what I want to say to you writers is, we like your shows. We want to enjoy your characters and be swept away to your universe. But sometimes, sometimes you make it so hard for us to care. I know you will eventually make it up to us that, that eventually you will you, you come back with cool things to watch. But why would you break my heart with these narrative decisions? I, I need a time out. Well, whatever theory turns out to be correct, it does seem that we can easily conclude that if you're going to try out a new series, especially a fantasy series or a science fiction series, try to hold on. The third episode might be bad, the fourth episode probably too, but it's no guarantee for the overall quality of a series like that. So just enjoy and you can always skip episodes. That's fantastic, but more importantly, my theory is proved and I think that means I'm a scientist. Your theory is proved, yes. Yes! Um, I'm gonna go out and celebrate. Okay, well, I'll do the editing then, oh, okay? thanks so much. This is not our outside door. And we don't have a ladder box here. So I hear it you like science.
about Saren. What is that? Some kind of VI interface? Rudimentary creatures of blood and flesh. You touch my mind, fumbling in ignorance, incapable of understanding. The Protheans were not the first. They did not create the Citadel. They did not forge the mass relays. They merely found them. My kind transcends your very understanding. We are each a nation. Independent. Free of all weakness. You cannot even grasp the nature of our existence. Your words are as empty as your future. I am the vanguard of your destruction. This exchange is over. Commander, we got trouble. Huh. Rudimentary creatures of blood and flesh, incapable of understanding what I am. I am beyond your comprehension. You never created the stone tablets that you call your home. You never added anything to your surroundings. You're merely developing the legacy of my kind. You cannot even grasp the nature of our existence. I am the vanguard of your destruction. And this conversation is over. Feel better now?